Let me go to uh, Dale. Dale calling us from Ohio. Hey, Dale. Hello, hello, Dan. How are you this morning? Well, thank you. Good. good. Dan, I'd like to uh, ask you about TIPS, T-I-P-S, the uh-huh. Treasury and Inflation Protect Securities. I noticed with an earlier caller um, who was asking you where to put uh, your money where it might be safe, and you talked about money market accounts and so forth. As I understand TIPS, and tell me if I'm wrong, but as I understand it, you are in Protected against inflation, if that happens, for uh, right. obviously the name of it implies that. Yes. But then also on the deflation side, if that happens, um, at, if you hold that uh, uh, security until it matures, you get back every dime that you put into it. So you don't lose any money, even in the event of deflation. So yes. my question is, given the fact that you're protected against both inflation and deflation with this, how come you're not recommending that? Well, I did recommend tips uh, the year before last. Uh, they, I have a tips fund on my uh, on my list of stocks that I track, and I have had it on my buy list uh, from from time to time. Here's the thing: there's so there's two very different things. <clears throat> You're right about a bond, an inflation protected bond, that you would buy through Treasury Direct, and you would buy that bond. They're very hard to buy. Uh, they're not always available. As a matter of fact, I don't know that they're available today, but um, they're not always available. And you're right about the idea of being protected on the downside, because in all bonds, regardless of whether it's uh, inflation protected or not, in all bonds, the the thing that I like about bonds, individual, individual bonds, let me say it again individual bonds because every, I don't want anybody running out or jumping into a bond mutual fund. That's not what I'm talking about, but an individual bond, whether it be an individual corporate bond, municipal bond, or, or a government bond of some sort. So the, the beauty of a bond is you should only buy a bond for income. In other words, either for income because you need the income or for income because it's that income that you're going to, you're going to count on for your growth, uh, so to speak in that bond. So, that's the only reason you buy it. If that, in fact, is the only reason you're buying it, that means you're never going to trade it. So that means you're going to hold it to maturity. It's hard to lose on a bond when you hold it to maturity because you're. if the bond is valued at, if you put $10,000 in a bond and the day before it matures, it's only worth 5000 it's kind of irrelevant because the next day it's going to give you 10000 It's going to give you back your principal. And you will have gotten the interest that you were promised through that period of time. So tips are the same way, obviously. So if you can buy an individual, the problem is they're very difficult to buy. And, uh, you know, you've got to be on Treasury Direct. You can only buy, which is not a, usually a big deal for most people, $100,000. And if you, you've got to track it and watch it and know when they're available and buy them. But what people end up doing, the reason I don't recommend it, is because the majority of people are going to go into a tip mutual fund. Tip mutual funds got clobbered last year, uh, and they're likely. Uh, I, I think they might be a little bit better by September, October this year. But I don't want people running to uh, uh, tip mutual funds like the couple that I have on my list. So that's the main reason. But you're right on all accounts. Obviously, if you have that bond, it's going to be protected. It's going to do well during inflationary times, and that's a good thing. And I love. I love that. Uh, about tips and i've always used inflation protected bonds in my charitable trust and and other uh, institutional money uh, that i've managed so uh, good question hopefully that helps